takes quite a force to crush a can like that. And this is a demo that most students will remember once they've seen it. It's widely used by science teachers to demonstrate that the atmosphere exerts a pressure. It's an impressive demo, but it can be difficult for students to understand exactly what's going on here. Let's take another look. To do this demo, you need to add about five millilitres of water to your can. You're then going to heat that up over a Bunsen burner. And you need to heat it up until it's obvious the water is turning into vapour. Now, most students should be able to grasp that. They should also be able to understand that the water vapour pushes out and replaces most of the air that was in the can beforehand. To do this, I'm using kitchen tongs rather than um, lab tongs. And when I place the can in the water, I'm going to make sure that the water completely covers the opening in the can. Now, you might explain this to students by saying that the sudden change in temperature causes the water vapour inside the can to condense. That greatly reduces the pressure inside the can, and it means there's a big difference in pressure between the inside and outside of the can. The high pressure on the outside pushes the sides in, which crushes the can. So there are three things going on. Firstly, the change in temperature. Secondly, the condensation of the water vapour. And finally, um, change in pressure that leads to an imbalance of forces. That's a complicated chain of argument, and it's based on something that students can't see, condensation of the water vapour inside the can. Here's a demonstration which at first glance looks a little more complicated, but which I think is actually easier for students to make sense of. It's the water fountain. So I have here a round bottom flask connected by some pressure tubing to a vacuum pump. I also have a beaker of water and a Hoffman clip, which I'm going to use to seal off the flask once I've evacuated it. Now, there are a few safety aspects to consider when doing this demonstration. I'm using a thick walled round bottom flask here. It's unlikely to implode, but it's definitely worth checking for any chips or cracks beforehand. I've also taken the precaution of covering it with cling film. I'm using a stand here with a heavy base to make sure that this apparatus is all very stable. I'm wearing safety glasses and I'm going to perform the demonstration behind a safety screen. You'll also need to make sure your students are um, set back a safe distance. Now I don't need a perfect vacuum inside this flask, so with this pump about 15 seconds should do it. Tighten up my Hoffman clip to seal off the flask. Okay. Right, I'm now going to remove the end of the rubber tubing from the pump and place it into the beaker of water. In it goes. And hopefully you'll be able to predict what happens when I release the clip. Compared to the can demo, you don't have the complication of having to explain the condensation of the water vapour. Instead, it's all about differences in pressure. So there's a low pressure inside the um, round bottom flask compared to the atmospheric pressure outside. So the atmospheric pressure pushes down on the surface of the water and that pushes the water up through the tubing into the flask. So the CAN demo is one that I hope teachers will show their students. But as a teaching tool, I think it works much better if used in conjunction with this water fountain. So you could start off with the collapsing CAN and then use the water fountain to reinforce that it's the differences in pressure that are important. You could then challenge students to use this idea to explain why the CAN was crushed. Both demonstrations use phenomena that students are unlikely to see outside the science classroom. Together, they're useful for challenging students to use the models they're learning about to construct explanations.